Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, now we're in Oregon at the beautiful Pat Acres Racing Complex. Uh, today we're going to go over some more advanced driving techniques. Um, we're out here at Summer Jam, hosted by Team Tanashimu, that's run by James Wicklin and Ian. Great guys. So happy to be here. But today we're going to go over left foot braking, and we're also going to go over tips for smaller tracks. got the windows up so there's a little less background noise they're literally drifting 15 feet away from me I'm gonna explain left foot braking in the car before we head to the track just so we can get a little bit of an understanding of how it works but basically left foot braking is pretty simple instead of braking normally you'd use your right foot you slide over with your clutch foot and you use the brake and usually this is done in conjunction with being on the gas so you're using the gas and the brake at the same time uh, it's used a little bit differently in rallying and road racing, but it's pretty common across all motorsports. Just how it's applied is a little bit different. With drifting, its use is kind of dynamic. It can do two things, whether you, and that's determined by whether you lock up the front brakes or you don't lock up the front brakes. Generally speaking, to use this technique, you're gonna need a car with a little bit more power, a car that can keep spinning the rear tires while applying a little bit of front brake. So I'd say like uh, if you have a 240 with an SR that's making more than 300, you can already start kind of using this technique. The first uh, use of it is just kind of covering the brake and use it to the point where you don't lock it up and this is to slow the car down while drifting. It's pretty intuitive, you use it to stay behind a slower car. There's not too many uses for this in the lead position. Um, there's one, we'll cover that later, but most of the time this is used in chase. Now the second use, and this one is a little bit harder and it's the more advanced one, is where you get on the foot brake enough to lock up the fronts and when you lock up the fronts you lose traction in the front tires and you're spinning the rear so you have no traction in the rear tires essentially this can put the car into a four-wheel slide and you can actually change the line of the car without lifting the throttle so you'll stay in boost push the line up and basically you'll still have lock so it's not like you're straightening up or anything You'll see this used a lot in Formula D on big bank tracks because they want to stay in boost, they want to keep making you know smoke, they don't want to lift off the throttle. At park here, the first corner is banked, it's the second gear corner, but I've used it a little bit with some success, so we'll show you that technique a little bit on the first corner, and um, hopefully we can get some tandems in, maybe with a car that's a little slower than mine, so I can show you the, the covering the foot brake technique. So, you'll have to excuse my shoes, they're a little muddy and dirty, it was raining yesterday, uh, not too many ways around that, but hopefully you guys can see my feet pretty clearly. Alright guys, so let's go back through this clip and I'll talk a little bit about what's happening. So as we're coming up to the corner, I give a hard jab of the left foot brake here and this is enough to lock up the front brakes. The amount of pressure necessary will vary from car to car and for a low speed corner like this, the effects of it aren't going to be super dramatic and you don't necessarily have to use it for the first corner of park, but I kind of wanted to show you guys and go through the motions or so just so you guys kind of understand the, the technique. So as I initiate, quick jab of the left foot brake, and this puts the car into a four wheel slide for a split second. When you don't have traction on all four tires, the car will kind of travel in the direction of inertia or momentum, which would be to the outside of the corner. This pushes my line further to the outside, 
and it gets me through the corner without me having to ever lift off the throttle or use handbrake. You'll see a lot of Formula D guys using this technique and a misconception is when you see the lead guy out in front locking up the front tires, uh, if you see on YouTube people will be like, oh, they're trying to choke up the guy in the rear or that's kind of dirty, but a lot of the times when it's on a bank, they're just trying to control their line a little bit. So let's go through this clip again. I'll talk a little bit about what's going on. Uh, left foot braking in the chase position is probably the most self-explanatory. If you're into drifting, you probably understand why you would do this. You're just trying to slow the car down so you don't plow into your homie and then you guys have to passively aggressively argue about who pays for what. Um, thank you James for trusting me to drive uh, tandem with you. I know those R33 doors probably aren't too easy to get. But here I am, I'm in the first corner here. As the boost comes up, I realize that if I don't get on the foot brake, most likely I'm gonna plow right through James. So instead of that, I'm gonna go left foot on the brake to try to slow the car down as it comes up into boost. The reason you wouldn't want to do this, or you could, but the reason why you wouldn't want to do this with the right foot and lift off the throttle is because cars with turbos, when you get back on the gas, it's not instant. It takes a few milliseconds for it to come up to full boost. The bigger the turbo, the longer this is. For my car, it's almost a quarter of a second, half a second. You can lose two car lengths in that, in that amount of time, which isn't the end of the world, but we all know you need those door-to-doors for the Instagrams. So as I'm going through the track here, Again, you'll see me use the left foot brake, and this time I'm using it without locking up the front brakes. The easiest way I can explain this technique is by referencing a roll racing technique called brake boosting. Uh, what roll racing is, is guys with 1,000 horsepower Supras, they'll hop on the freeway and do 60 to 140 mile per hour races. And they're actually starting this race while rolling. And they'll do the countdown, three, two, one, go. Um, but before the, th before the countdown even ends, these guys with laggy turbos will be full throttle and actually holding the car at 60 miles per hour with the foot brake. So they got both feet on the pedals. And while they're do uh, why they're doing this is because with a laggy turbo, you don't get all of your power as soon as you put the foot down. You have to wait for the turbo to spool up. With drifting, obviously we don't have 100 millimeter turbos, or at least I don't, but that technique still kind of holds true. What I'm doing here is I'm getting on the gas before the apex of the corner, and that's actually before I want full power, and I'm holding the car with the foot brake so that when my turbo starts spooling up, I'm in the right place and my line is correct, and I'm ready for that car to kind of push wide as soon as the rear tires get up to wheel speed. And without this technique, you could replace it with a clutch kick uh, when you want the boost to come in, and that'll be more instantaneous. But this, uh, this technique allows you to be a little easier on your transmission, a little easier on your clutch, and in my opinion, it looks a little better and smoother. So what I'm going on about here as I'm driving is basically the importance of looking to the next corner as you're drifting through these tight tracks. Um, I know sometimes when I'm not, I'm just zoning out and spacing out. I have a tendency as I'm driving just to look like 10 feet, 15 feet in front of the hood of the car, and that's really not helping me in any sort of way. Um, what, what happens when you do something like that is every corner that comes up kind of surprises you, especially when you're new to a track. And so if you make the conscious effort to maybe look 50 feet ahead, 100 feet ahead to the next corner, it might feel a little unnatural at first, but you'll soon notice that when you do that, the car kind of feels like it's driving itself to the next corner. Okay, so that's it. The events come to a close. I hope you guys learned a little something. Um, this was the advanced tip, and it, we weren't going to start with the events. We were going to do a whole series with beginner, intermediate, advanced, and then we would release them in a proper order. But the Supra shit itself and blew the piston rings, I think. There's blow by everywhere. So the next episode is going to have to wait two or three months, but in the meantime, you guys can comment, tell me what you guys like, uh, what tips you guys want, or if you guys see me doing something that you want me to explain, we can do that too. Um, but this is going in for a rebuild as soon as we can, and then as soon as it's out, we're going to finish the series, a uh, bunch of new driving tips, new techniques. Hope you guys like it, and we'll make more of these soon. <laughs>